phase changes. A lot of this part of the unit's going to be review. So we've talked about a phase change diagram before. Make sure that you know how to read uh, the phase change diagrams where the solid, liquid, and vapor are located. Point A, which is located there, is the triple point. Remember, the triple point is where you have all three phases present. Point B is the critical point. And you need to add the definition of that on the bottom of your note sheet. And that's when molecules have too much kinetic energy to stick together to form a liquid. So they can no longer be liquefied by just changing the pressure. Point C, it says what phases are occurring. Well, it's between the solid and liquid, so we would have solid and liquid phases on that line at point C and anywhere else on that line. Point D is located here. And it's between the solid and vapor lines, so we have solid and vapor phases present at point D. Make sure you know where all of your phase changes occur. Solid to liquid is melting, so if we're going that way, it's melting. The opposite of that would be freezing. Liquid of vapor, remember, was vaporization. While the opposite is condensation. Solid of vapor, remember, is sublimation. And vapor to solid is depositation or deposition. It also says where would normal boiling and melting occur? You'd look on the pressure and find 760 millimeters of mercury or 760 tor or 1 atm. Any of those normal pressures or 101.3 kPa. Once you find standard pressure, you follow it over. And for normal melting, it occurs between solid and liquid and normal boiling between liquid and vapor. So pause the iPod and answer those three questions in your head. So for the first one, if we want the normal melting point, we find 1 atm, and melting should be between solid and liquid. Normal boiling should also be at 1 atm, but it should be between the liquid and gas. And if we want to find solid, liquid, and gas, then that would have to be the triple point, which is located there. Pause the iPod and answer those two questions in your head. If we wanted to make the green dot become a vapor, we could either de increase temperature or decrease pressure, or a combination of both. If we increase the temperature of the pink dot, then first it would liquefy and then vaporize. This is a heating curve. Make sure that you can read it and draw one. Notice there's three slants and two horizontal lines. The first slant is solid, then liquid, and then gas. Make sure you know solid to liquid, what that's called. And make sure you label it correctly on your picture because your picture is slightly different than this one. So that's melting. The opposite would be freezing. Liquid to gas, vaporization. And the opposite, condensation. 
Notice the temperature is not changing when it's undergoing a phase change. Also notice heat energy is increasing as we move right across the graph. So pause the iPod and figure out where those would occur. So freezing is between solid and liquid. So we're going to go liquid to solid, and so it begins at point C, because you're liquid and then you start to solidify. Melting goes from solid to liquid, so we want to be solid and then all of a sudden at point B it starts to melt. Vaporization, liquid gas, so at point D it begins. And condensation, gas to liquid, must begin at point E. One last thing on the graph, make sure that you know which ones are endothermic and which ones are exothermic. As you progress right, energy is increasing. And if energy is increasing, then it must be endothermic. If energy is decreasing, such as freezing, then it must be exothermic. And energy increasing, like melting, is endothermic. So if a reaction is exothermic, energy should be released. So scratch that. So exothermic energy released, so it should be going down. It should be losing energy. Endothermic energy is absorbed. So it should be gaining energy, it should increase. So on the heating curve, going right is endothermic and left is exothermic. So heat energy can be used to do work in one of two ways. It can either be used to change the temperature, in which case we're gonna use MCAT, or to change the state or phase. Ice is gonna remain at zero degrees Celsius until it's fully liquid and liquid water remains at 100 until it's fully steam. So all the energy is being used in a phase change to pull the molecules apart, to separate them and break the intermolecular forces holding them together. If a substance is melting, then that's going to be the enthalpy of fusion, or the heat of fusion. It's the energy required to melt one gram of a specific substance at its melting point. So Q is heat, M is mass, and HF is the heat of fusion. And it's usually in joules per gram or calories per gram. So it says how much energy is required to melt 50.3 grams of water at zero degrees. Since we're just melting it, we're going to use our Q equals MHF. We're looking for Q, we know mass, and we know the HF was 334 gram, or joules per gram. Grams cancel, leaving us with joules. And so we have 16,800 joules. The enthalpy of vaporization, or the heat of vaporization, 
is the energy required to vaporize one gram of a substance at its boiling point. So it's the same exact equation except we're going to use the HV or heat of vaporization. So on this problem, we are vaporizing that same amount of water at 100 degrees Celsius. So since it's just being vaporized, we use Q equals MHV. We know our mass, and we know our HV, or heat of vaporization. Grams cancel out, and we're left with 113,678 joules. Make sure that you can get the heat of fusion and heat of vaporization from a heat curve such as this one. So if we're looking for the heat of fusion, we're looking at how much energy it takes to melt it. Melting's going from B to C. We know the energy is involved there, so it's just a simple subtraction. You get 205 joules. Heat of vaporization is to go from D to E. So again, we subtract and we get 810 joules. So this says, well, which is larger and why? Well, the heat of vaporization is larger than the heat of fusion. It always is because you have to pull the molecules completely apart. While when you're melting it, you're just pulling the molecules apart slightly. And it takes much more energy to pull them completely apart. 